Oh, it's another lovely spring day. The part that sucks about it is yesterday, other than the fact that it was only like 45 degrees outside, turned into a nice, beautiful, calm, sunny evening. Would have been a nice night for a fire, except I was working here till almost 10. But uh, now it's raining again, and it's supposed to rain all day, so working on the elevator. As you can see, it's changed a little bit since last time you saw it. Last Sunday, Dad and I got this thing all tore apart. Getting the chain out of it and getting the carriage out from underneath it was actually pretty easy. It only took me probably an hour by myself. But my God, getting all these sections apart, probably... Oh... 48 bolts no yeah 48 bolts which is would have been the eight per joint because there's a well oh no they're in a bag there's a little there's a little steel strip right here that goes up in in here and spans four holes two per side or one per side so eight holes per or eight bolts per joint on six joints those were the only bolts that i was actually able to get out by unthreading them I, all the other ones we had to go in and split the nut so there was oh 144 bolts on this on all the side plates and then 36 more no 72 more because they have uh spacer plates or uh, spanner plates that reinf well these guys right here actually these go in here and span the joint to reinforce it all those had to be cut out so, 144 plus 72, whatever that comes out to, had to cut every single one of them things off because they're all uh, pan head bolts for a flathead screwdriver. So you you can't you couldn't you couldn't hold them with a screwdriver. They just sit there and spin. So that was a fun time, but we got her. So anyhow, and took it all the way apart because to some extent every one of the sections needs a little body work and we were going to have to take two out of the center anyhow so it was just easier to take it all the way apart and start fresh. So anyhow, still some damn bolts stuck in the holes because when you took when we got the nuts off they expanded but get them out as we go so I guess just start at the top of the stack and work my way down this one needs that dollied out right there that dollied out there the head or the tail section where the drive is needs the whole damn end cut off of it to start fresh So, I guess we'll just pick one and go from there. Man, I tell you what, computers are just pissing me the fuck off right now. I got a video uploading right now that was supposed to be up last night that made it to seven, like 77%, and then my laptop decided to disconnect from the Wi-Fi. And because computers are stupid, when you reconnect it to the Wi-Fi, the damn thing won't just pick up where it left off and keep uploading. No, you got to cancel the upload, delete the video, start all over again. So I got here this morning, did that. The fucker made it to 19% upload, disconnected itself from the Wi-Fi. So now I just had to restart it again. Hopefully this time it makes it through. I got my... 
I think it's a six or a seven foot ethernet cable at my house that I used to use on my old laptop. I think that's going to come back over here. And from now on, I don't upload videos. Damn thing, it's going to be hardwired because this is, this whole Wi-Fi bullshit is pissing me off. But anyhow, first section's ready to go. Um, this is the, where the head pulley'd be. Or the head, head shaft, I guess you'd call it. It's not a pulley. Um... And these are the end plates or the side plates for it. That's the slide, the shaft, the sprockets. That plate's got to go down in the press and get straightened out because it's obviously a little schmucked. But this whole corner right here, this whole thing was rolled over and smashed flat against the wall and the whole thing was kind of crunched down on itself like they ran over it or into it or something happened to it. So about two hours of work with clamps and I had it sandwiched between, well, I sandwiched it between two bars of steel and I had clamps all over the place and then that with brute forced it as far as it could go smashing it between two plates of steel and then I had one on there and I was dollying it out and had to get a piece that fit up in here and clamp that and dolly all that out and when it got smashed it shrunk the steel. And it's all, it's still kind of messed up right in here. But you'd almost have to go in, cut a section out, get it, everything laid out where it's supposed to be, and then weld it back, or weld it back together. And if it was like a fender or, you know, sheet metal on a tractor or something, I'd do that. But for what it is, I mean, I got her pretty it's it's a little it's got a little bit of an ink right in here but when i put the side plate back on because those are actually made out of quarter inch plate put the side plate back on it'll pull this all out straight where it belongs again so i'm not too worried about it and that uh you can tell right here is where the metal is either it's either shrunk or expanded one of the two but there's there's almost excess either not enough or excess material in here and it won't it won't go back exactly the way it was but it's pretty damn close i'm kind of happy with how that turned out and then the bottom was they had let this they had let it and en or endo itself and the head section was laying down in the dirt in an old cow lot so lord knows what it was actually laying in could have been manure for all i know but it was all rusty and crusty on the bottom, so I hit it all with or hit it with a wire brush and sprayed some cold galvanizing compound there and here because this was all this was all rust. All the galvanizer had come off of it, so I hit all that with cold gal compound just to protect it a little bit. Obviously, the the trough itself and all that's ain't got any galvanized left on it but that's going to have the chain going over it and everything so and the way to do it right would be to sandblast it but that's not going to happen so anyhow moving on all right time to try out dad's new toy this sprocket's got a uh, double spring pin in it that is being rather difficult i think i got it broke loose but it's not being all too cooperative um so dad actually bought this right at the tail end of last week i think it showed up monday or tuesday it's a mini ductor 2 magnetic induction heater um it'll heat ferrous and non-ferrous metal without flame so um i got the the uh cable coil in it now because you can uh wrap that but it also has where did i put the box it's got uh pre-made coils like that for nuts and bolts and stuff dad actually bought it for silver soldering uh ends on pipe or uh, not ends uh fitting ends on the hydraulic tubing um he got the uh other coil set for it that goes up to one inch i think inch and a half preformed yeah there's a, the big one's an inch and a half and then this one, this is actually what they call their bearing buddy coil. You set a bearing on a mat and then you, you lay that coil around the bearing and you use it to heat bearings to install them. But we're going to see if I can make it do what I want it to here. So 
It's got a two minute uh, duty cycle timer on, or duty cycle time on it. You can hold it or you can run it for two minutes and you gotta let it take a break. It's not going to be, obviously, as fast as a torch because you're not applying direct heat, but uh, if you're in sensitive areas where you don't want to flame, these things are great. We had one in auto shop class when I was in high school, this same one, except I think it was just a mini ductor. I don't think it was a mini ductor, too, and we used the shit out of that. Dad actually uh, tested it you know, Tuesday, Wednesday. Whenever it showed up, Dad actually made a test joint, silver solder and uh, a JIC. And he tested it with a number 10 JIC fitting on a piece of half-inch hydraulic tubing. And it worked pretty good, except at that point he didn't have the right size coil, so he couldn't... Uh, slip it down over the fitting exactly like he needed to now that he's got that uh, extra kit it should work pretty damn good there's like a mouse nest or something in there that ought to smell nice when it starts to heat up Oh, she's getting toasty. This side, they just had a damn bolt stuck in it. They must have sheared the pin or something. Oh, damn, I think she's moving. Hit the damn punch. Well, maybe she's not. No, I'm pretty sure it is. Ever so slowly. Oh yeah, it's bro it's broke loose now. All right, here she comes. I took it and flipped it, drove it back a little ways, flipped it, drove it back, flipped it, and now it's actually coming out. my damn punch don't get stuck but that's always fun ta-da son of a bitch and we're gonna give me a second here we're gonna talk a shop safety thing real quick Real, real quick. So you see how that punch has got them cracks in it and it's starting to mushroom? You got a punch like that, take it on the grinder and dress it till them cracks are gone. So if you're using that thing, those things will flake off and they'll stick in. You can get, you can get fair, hurt fairly bad. So shop safety tip. Any of your punches, keep the mushroom ground off of them so they don't crack and split and fly off in every which way. Well, the uh, tail section, this this is where the drive used to be. Ended up cutting damn near two feet off of it to get back to good, not screwed up metal. Um, actually, I can show you the... Don't mind that buzzing, that charger's... When it make when we put that nine amp hour battery on there, it makes a little bit of a funny noise. Um, that's what's left of the top pan. See, that's all fucking torch cut right there, and then that's the bottom pan, and then that's the one flare that was left on the end, and that's the one of the sprockets and the whacked up end plate and. 
whatever these triangle pieces that he was welding on there to, for patch panels that thinking they're grain bin parts but lord only knows anyway all that shit's gone the hitch is gone because that was all busted up um the uh this is the uh jack shaft that stuck through for the pto to go on and i started taking this apart because i was going to take uh, or reuse these bearing supports well they've been flame cut to take a bigger bearing and the end plates have been flame cut too to take a bigger bearing so those aren't getting those are not getting used and the new plan well the plan that we've come up with for it is shit can the uh end pieces and gonna make a plate that's got the radius and everything built into it that sticks out your drive shaft with the the chain drive sprockets is going to be here and the plate's going to come all the way back into here and it's going to incorporate the bearing for the tail shaft the bearing for the pto drive shaft going to have a uh, chain tensioner on it and then it's going to be made out of uh, dad's thinking probably seven gauge we'll see what uh, see what actually comes to fruition but that's the plan right now and that way you'll have oh uh, whatever that ends up coming damn near two and a half feet of solid steel plate on the tail end of the elevator so that your drive components and everything are all that stress is going into those steel plates it's not actually going to be going into the tin you have a nice rigid frame for the shafts and the bearings and everything to be supported on so nothing's going to be moving nothing's going to be torquing nothing's going to be tweaking and then it's all going to be a weld mitt there the, the originally they had a piece of sheet steel that arced around and was bolted in everywhere that's probably going to be all welded in now and it's going to be made out of heavy get or heavier gauge metal so that you have a good solid place to mount the uh, draw bar stake pocket. And it's going to make this whole end of the elevator heavier because before the way they had this put together, um, it was balanced out just about right where it didn't take a whole lot of weight on the upper end of the elevator to make it flop over. So any, anyway, that's the... Uh, plan for now if that makes any sense it'll make more sense when it all starts to fall together should have had a lot more done today but some friends showed up and talking ensued and lost about three hours of actual work time so um i got all this stuff the sprockets the uh head plates that the idler shaft and everything go on the the guard that goes over the uh the end where the the uh tail shaft or the head shaft is and all this shit even though this stuff was galvanized but all the galvanizing has gone off of it and that stuff's all rusty take it sort of buddies tonight and have them blast it all and want to paint it all orange so it's got some protection and this section and this section don't need a whole lot of work they just need a little dolly in and then those two sections are the two that are going to get cut apart to make one so but because of how this all worked out and i didn't get done today what i'm going to get or what i wanted to get done i'm probably going to go ahead and just uh continue on on this video so that i don't get too many parts going and really the only thing i got left as far as filming on on the, the elevator sections is cutting those two apart and making one out of the two because that's just a little bit of dolly work maybe 20 minutes a piece on the these two here in the middle and those two will probably be about an hour maybe depending on how rough them or how stubborn them rivets want to be so anyhow i guess on that note we will catch you right now all right so last project on these elevator sections um this guy 
these two, the last two I got to work on are the two that were so wadded up they can't be saved. This one made, this must have been where the kink happened and that one, the top caved in. So, got to cut the bottom off of this one and cut the uh, bottom off of that one and put this top with that bottom and make one good section and the bottom off of this and the top off of that are scrap. Now the one thing I do have to save is this panel right here because this elevator has this panel right here that you can take off and it's got a screen in it and when you are running corn with or ear corn with it your fines would fall through here as the elevator is going up because this would be the top so or this would be heading toward the top so your drag would be pulling your corn that way your fines would fall through here and then as the chain's returning your fines would fall through this hole and you would either let them fall out on the ground in a pile or have a wheelbarrow under there or whatever and then you could use your fines when you're grinding your feed ration or depending on if it's bees wings or whatever for bedding or whatever the per whatever the particular person used their fines for but so on that bottom i'm gonna have to uh save this cover plate and cut the hole that is covering up in that bottom which is no big deal and transfer the holes and dimple them which i should just be able to use a center punch for and put it back together and the, the top needs a little straighten and there's a doink where did i see it there's a doink right here that needs straightened out and a doink right here but that's no big deal the other ones were far worse so and these rivets are real fun you got to knock the heads off with a hard wheel and then buff them down a little or as much as you can with a flapper wheel and then pop it off of the crowbar and then grind the shank down and knock them out although i don't got to worry about that on this because i'm not reusing the panel but those rivets are set in there good they do not come out easy it is not fun so where can i set you that's a safe spot and a few minutes of grinding later if i can find a spot to get underneath it take that damn bracket off. We're bouncing every which way but loose. This is where I wish I had my old glasses. That'd make life so much easier. There's one. And I gotta get that one. But that bracket for the undercarriage is screwing me. Alright, so I got the top and bottom separated on that first piece. I got my uh, delete plate off surprisingly i only had to cut three screws all the rest turned out which surprised the shit out of me uh got the backup brackets for the undercarriage cut off so i got those and uh before i undid all my jig here i figured i'd show you what i've been doing to get everything dolly back out straight um basically i just been using clamps and every piece of flat scrap iron we can come up with to cover wide enough areas 
to span the dents and bends and whatnot. And a 32 ounce ball peen hammer. I'd make a good body man, except for all the tools I like to use to beat dents out are huge. So, but I got, there was a kink right here. I got that out for the most part, but the steel's a little stretched, so it's got a little whoop de doo you probably take it out with some heat, but it's not that important. And then I got just got done beating this one out. There was a doink right here in the side that kind of caved in like that. And had a buckle right here, so I got that beat back out for the most part. At least I think so. See what happens when I get my backup block out of the way. It's always nice when it doesn't spring back out crooked. Got a little bit of a hump right there, but like I say, without you, you could probably pour a little bit of heat to it and get it to come back out straight. But for what it is, good enough, a lot better than what it was. Wadded up mess. So, anyway, next step, get that one cut apart. All right, so I got the bottom half off of the other section and got it straightened out it was bent uh here it had a big old dent pushed in this was uh where the upper stop for the uh undercarriage was and the pair i don't know if they had a bolt come loose or whatever the hell happened they ripped that bolt out and this was all wided in right here but luckily it didn't go all the way across it was just right there and that hole's still jacked up but i don't think we're gonna need it so i'm not gonna fix it yet if we need it i'll fix it but it's flat and straight and i'm not worried too much about it yet so but gotta punch this hole in it and i made sure that everything you see my imprint from the spear is going that way and it's going that way on that one so i made sure that it's on the right side of the the panel and gonna cut her off with this guy. This is a uh, Milwaukee uh, dry cut skill saw for cutting metal. It's not it's not a wood saw. Don't try to do this with a wood saw. Um, it's actually a Milwaukee uh, twenty seven eighty two dash twenty. It's a badass little saw. They're the shit for cutting cutting tin, barn tin. Um, I think it's rated for half inch plate, half or three quarter plate pretty sure it's half but uh anyway get this hole buzzed in make sure it's straight thing about it though it's loud
The nice thing about that saw is it gives you a nice straight cut, unlike Sawzall. The one thing you got to be aware of is definitely have your safety glasses on because it, uh, it throws shavings everywhere. But it's a handy little shit. Well, I got the delete plate all back in. Um, punched the holes in and they, they need to have a taper in them for these flathead screws. So I took a piece of round stock and ground a taper on it that matched. And just set it on a block of wood so they had something behind it that would give and dimple them. Well, it it pulled out way too far, which was what I was kind of afraid of without a backup punch. But uh, I got lucky. I put all the bolts in, got it tight, and then laid a piece of steel underneath it right up next to the bolt and dollied it back out flat. It's damn near perfect. So... That was a good deal. So now the last thing to do is to mate them back together. And there you go, five good usable sections. Should make it uh, 40, should make it about 38 foot-ish, which um, gonna be perfect for what I need because I don't have a whole lot of room over there. It's not like I'm reaching clear up on top of a crib. I'm just going to a uh, eight foot, eight or nine foot tall loft. So, yeah, not too bad, really. I was, well, the ends were a lot worse. The center sections weren't that bad. There's one I didn't even have to do anything to. But anyway... Now, just got to wait for the new plates for the drive side and get my parts back for the tail side so I can get those painted, get the tail put all, or get the tail stock all put back together. And make the shafts, make the drive shaft and the driven shaft for the for the drive. Because the old shaft, well, I cut one shaft in half, and the other one I'm not going to bother. If I'm making one, I'm making both. So, make new shafts, get the new end plates, get the end, get the new drive assembly, get all that put together. Um, and I do got to do a little bit of work to the undercarriage, but not much. And really for all intents and purposes once i get all my parts you just bolt it back together there's not really a whole lot of work left to it so the hard part's done but anyway i guess that does it for this one we'll catch you all on the next one